Oh, 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 oh. If you shall chance, Camillo, to visit Bohemia on the light occasion whereon my services are now on foot, you shall see, as I have said, great difference betwixt our Bohemia and your Sicilia. I think this coming summer the King of Sicilia means to pay Bohemia the visitation which he justly owes him. Wherein our entertainment shall shame us, we will be justified in our loves. For indeed... I beseech you. Verily, I speak it in the freedom of my knowledge. We, we cannot with such magnificence, in, in so rare, I know not what to say. Oh, For we will give you sleepy drinks that your senses, unintelligent of our insufficiency, may, though they cannot praise us, as little accusers. You pay a great deal too dear for what's given freely. Well, believe me, I speak as my understanding instructs me and as my honesty puts it to changes of the watery star hath been the shepherd's note since we have left our throne without a burden. Time as long again would be filled up my brother with our thanks, and yet we should for perpetuity go hence in debt, and therefore like a cipher yet standing in rich place I multiply with one we thank you many thousands more that go before it. Stay your thanks a while and pay them when you pass. Sir, that's tomorrow. I am questioned by my fears of what may chance or breed upon our absence that may blow no sleeping winds at home to make us say this is put forth too truly. Besides, I have stayed to tire your royalty. We are tougher, brother, than you can put us to it. No longer stay. One seven night longer. Very sooth tomorrow. We'll part the time betweens then, and in that I'll no gainsay. Press me not, beseech you so. There is no tongue that moves, none. None in the world so soon as yours could win me. So it should now, whether necessity in your request, although twere needful, I denied it. My affairs do even drag me homeward, which to hinder, wherein your love a whip to me, my stay to you a charge and trouble, to say both, farewell, our brother. Tongue-tied, our queen, speak you. I had thought, sir, to have held my peace until you had drawn oaths from him not to stay. You, sir, charge him too coldly. Tell him you are sure all in Bohemia's well. This satisfaction the bygone day proclaimed. Say this to him, he's beat from his best ward. Well said, Hermione. To tell he longs to see his son were strong. But let him say so then, and let him go. But let him swear so, and he shall not stay. We'll thwack him hence with distaffs. Yet of your royal presence, I'll adventure the borrow of a week. When of Bohemia you take my lord, I'll give him my commission to let him there a month behind the jest prefixed for parting. Yet good deed, Leontes. I love thee not a jar of the clock behind. What lady, she her lord? You'll stay? No, madam. Nay, but you will. I may not, verily. Verily. You put me off with limber vows, but I, though you would seek to unsphere the stars with oaths, should yet say, Sir Logo. Verily you shall not go. A lady's verily is as potent as a lord's. Will you go yet? 
forced me to keep you as a prisoner, not like a guest. So you shall pay your fees when you depart and save your thanks. How say you, my prisoner or my guest? By your dread, verily, one of them you shall be. Your guest, then, madam. To be your prisoner should import offending, which is for me less easy to commit than you to punish. Not your jailer, then, but your kind hostess. Come, I'll question you of my lord's tricks and yours when you were boys. You were pretty lordlings then. We were, fair queen, two lads that thought there was no more behind but such a day tomorrow as today, and to be boy eternal. Was not my lord the very old wag of the two? We were as twin lambs that did frisk in the sun and bleat the one at the other. What we changed was innocence for innocence. We knew not the doctrine of ill-doing, nor dreamed that any did. Had we pursued that life, and our weak spirits ne'er been higher reared with stronger blood, we should have answered heaven boldly, not guilty. The imposition cleared hereditary hours. By this we gather you have tripped since? Oh, my most sacred lady, temptations have since then been born to us. For in those unfled days was my wife a girl. Your precious self had then not crossed the eyes of my young playfellow. Grace to boot. Of this make no conclusion, lest you say your queen and I are devils. Yet go on. The offences we have made you do well answer. If you first sinned with us, and that with us you did continue fault, and that you slipped not with any but with us. Is he one yet? He is stay, my lord. At my request he would not. Hermione, my dearest, thou never spokest to better purpose. Never? Never but once. What have I twice said well? When was before? I prithee tell me. Crams with praise and makes as fat as tame things. One good deed, dying tongueless, slaughters a thousand waiting upon that. Our praises are our wages. You may rise with one soft kiss, a thousand furlongs, ere with spur we heat an acre. But to the girl, my last good deed was to entreat his stay. What was my first? It has an elder sister, or I mistake you. Oh, would her name were Grace. But once before I spoke to the purpose, when? Nay, let me have thy long. Why, that was when three crabbed months had soured themselves to death, and I could make thee open thy white hand and clap thyself my love. Then didst thou utter, I am yours forever. Tis grace indeed. Why, well, lo, you now, I have spoke to the purpose twice. The one forever earned a royal husband, the other, for some while, a friend. Too hot, too hot. The mingled friendship far is mingling bloods. <laughs> I have tremor cordis on me. My heart dances, but not for joy, not joy. This entertainment may a free face put on, derive a liberty from heartiness, from bounty, fertile bosom, and will become the agent, to may I grant, but to be paddling par and pinching fingers as now they are, and making practised smiles as in a looking-glass, and then to sigh as to the more to the dear. Oh, that is entertainment my bosom likes not, nor my brows. Mamilius, art thou my boy? Aye, my good lord. Your face. Why, that's my boarcock. What, has smutched thy nose? They say it is a copy out of mine. Come, Captain, we must be neat. Not neat, but cleanly, Captain. And yet the steer, the heifer, and the calf are all called neat. Still virginaling upon his palm. Now, oh, now, you wanton calf. Art thou my calf? Yes, if you will, my lord. Thou wants a rough passion, the shoots that I have to be full like me. Yet they say we are almost as like as eggs. Women say so that will say anything, but where they false as o'er dyed blacks, as wind, as waters, false as dice are to be wished by one that fixes no bourne twixt his and mine, yet were it true to say this boy were like me. Come, Sir Page, look on me with your welkin eye. Sweet villain, most dearest, my collop. Can thy damn may be 
affection thy intention stabs the center. Thou dost make possible things not so held, communicates with dreams. How can this be? With what's unreal thou coactive art and fellows nothing, then tis very credence thou mayst co-join with something, and thou dost, and that beyond commission, and I find it, and that to the infection of my brains, and the hardening of my brows. What means, Cecilia? Something seems unsettled. How, my lord? What cheer? How is it with you, best brother? You look as if you held a brow of much distraction. Are you moved, my lord? No, in good earnest. How sometimes nature will betray its folly, its tenderness, and make itself a pastime to harder bosoms. Looking on the lines of my boy's face, methoughts I did recoil twenty-three years and saw myself unbreached in my green velvet coat, my dagger muzzle, lest it should bite its master and so prove as ornaments oft do too dangerous. How like methought I then was to this colonel, this squash, this gentleman. Mine honest friend, will you take eggs for money? No, my lord, I'll fight. You will? Why, happy man be's dole. My brother, are you so fond of your young prince as we do seem to be of ours? If at home, sir, he's all my exercise, my mirth, my matter. Now my sworn friend and then mine enemy, my parasite, my soldier, statesman all. He makes a July's day short as December and with his varying childness cures in me thoughts that would thick my blood. So stands this squire office with me. We two will walk, my lord, and leave you to your graver steps. Hermione, how thou lovest us, show in our brother's welcome. Let what is dear in Sicily be cheap, next to thyself and my young rover. He's apparent to my heart. If you would seek us, we are yours at the garden. Shall's attend you there? To your own bents dispose you, you'll be found, be you beneath the sky. I am angling now, though you perceive me not how I give line. Go to, go to, how she holds up the neb, the bill to him, and arms her with the boldness of a wife to her allowing husband. Gone already, inch thick, knee deep, Forehead and ears, a forked one. Go play, boy. Play. Thy mother plays, and I play too, but so disgraced a part whose issue will hiss me to my grave. Contempt and clamor will be my knell. Go play, boy. Play. There have been, or I am much deceived, cuckles there now. And many a man there is, even at this present now, while I speak this, holds his wife by the arm and little thinks she has been sluiced in his absence and his pond fished by his next neighbor, by Sir Smile, his neighbor. Nay, there's comfort in it, whilst other men have gates and those gates opened as mine against their will. Should all despair that have revolted wives, the tenth of mankind would hang themselves. Physic for it does none. It is a bawdy planet that will strike where tis predominant, and tis powerful, think it, from east, west, north, and south, be it concluded. No barricado for a belly. Know it. It'll let in and out the enemy with bag and baggage. Many a thousand arms have the disease and feel not. How oh, now, boy? I am like you, they say. Why, that's some comfort. Lord Camillo there. Aye, my good lord. Go play, Mamelius. Thou art an honest man. Camillo, this great sir will yet stay longer. Well, you had much ado to make his anchor hold. When you cast out, it still came in. It's noted. He would not stay at your petitions, made his business more material. Didst perceive it? They're here with me already, whispering, rounding, Sicilia is a so forth. Tis far gone when I shall gust it last. How came Camillo that he did stay? At the good queen's entreaty. At the queen's, be it. Good, 
should be pertinent, but so it is, it is not. Was this taken by any understanding pate but thine? For thy conceit is soaking, will draw in more than the common blocks. Not noted is but of the finer natures, by some severals of headpiece extraordinary. Lower messes perchance are to this business purblind, say. Business, my lord. I think most understand Bohemia stays here longer. Ah. Stays here longer. Aye, but why? To satisfy your highness and the entreaties of our most gracious mistress. Satisfy the entreaties of your mistress. Satisfy. Let that suffice. I've trusted thee, Camillo, with all the nearest things to my heart, as well my chamber councils, wherein priests like thou hast cleansed my bosom. I from thee departed, thy penitent reformed. But we have been deceived in thy integrity. Deceived in that which seems so. Forbid it, forbid, my lord. To bide upon it. Thou art not honest. Or if thou inclinest that way, thou art a coward, which hocks his honesty behind, restraining from course required, or else thou must be counted a servant grafted in my serious trust, and therein negligent, or else a fool that ceased a game played home, the rich stake drawn, and takes it all for jest. My gracious lord, I may be negligent, foolish, and fearful. In every one of these no man is free, but that his negligence his folly, fear, among the infinite doings of the world, sometime puts fall. In your affairs, my lord, if ever I were willful negligent, it was my folly. If industriously I played the fool, it was my negligence, not weighing well the end. If ever fearful to do a thing, were I the issue doubted, whereof the execution did cry out against the non-performance, t'was a fear which oft infects the wisest. These, my lord, are such allowed infirmities that honesty is never free of. But beseech your grace, be plainer with me. Let me know my trespass by its own visage. If I then deny it, tis none of mine. Have you not seen Camillo? But that's past doubt you have, or your eyeglass is thicker than a cuckold's horn, or heard for to a vision so apparent, rumour cannot be mute, or thought, for cogitation resides not in that man that does not think my wife is slippery. If thou wilt confess, or else be impudently negative to have nor eyes, nor ears, nor thoughts, then say, my wife's a hobby horse, deserves a name as rank as any flax wench that puts to it before her throat's plight. Say it and justify it. I would not be a stander by to hear my sovereign mistress clouded so without my present vengeance taken. Shrew my heart, you never spoke what did become you less than this, which to reiterate was sin as deep as that. Though true, is whispering nothing, is leaning cheek to cheek, is meeting noses, kissing with inside lip, Stopping the career of laughter with a sigh, a note infallible of breaking honesty. Horsing foot on foot, skulking in corners, wishing clocks more swift, hours, minutes, noon, midnight, and all eyes blind with the pin and web. But theirs, theirs only, that would unseen be wicked. Is this nothing? Why, then, the world and all that's in is nothing. The covering sky is nothing. Bohemia, nothing. My wife is nothing, nor nothing have these nothings, if this be nothing. Could my lord be cured of this diseased opinion, and betimes, for tis most dangerous. Say it be, it is true. No, no, my lord. Please, you lie, you lie. I say thou liest, Camillo, and I hate thee. Pronounce thee a gross lout, a mindless slave, or else a hovering temporizer that canst with thy eyes at once see good and evil inclining to them both. Were my wife's liver infected as her life, she would not live the running of one glass. Who does infect her? Why, he that wears her like her medal hanging about his neck. Bohemia! Oh, if I had servants true about me, that bear eyes to see a like mine honor as their prophets, their own particular thrifts, they would do that which should undo more doing. I am thou, his cupbearer, 
whom I from meaner form have benched and reared to worship, who mayst see plainly as heaven sees earth and earth sees heaven how I am gold, mightst bespice a cup to give mine enemy a lasting wink, which drafts to me were cordial. And that with no rash potion, but with a lingering dram that should not work maliciously like poison. But I cannot believe this crack to be in my dread mistress, so sovereignly being honorable to have loved. Make that thy question and go rot. Dost think that I am so muddy, so unsettled to appoint myself in this vexation? Sully the purity and whiteness of my sheets, which to preserve is sleeve, which being spotted is gold, thorns, nettles, fields of wasps. Give scandal to the blood of the prince, my son, whom I do think is mine and love as mine, without right moving to it. Would I do this? Could man so blench? I must believe you, sir. I do, and will fetch off Bohemia for it, provided that when he's removed, your highness will take again your queen as yours at first, even for your son's sake, and thereby forestalling the injury of tongues in courts and kingdoms known and allied to you. Thou dost advise me, even so as I mine own course have set down. I'll give no blemish to her honor. None, my lord, go then, and with a countenance as clear as friendship wears at feasts, keep with Bohemia and with your queen. I am his cupbearer, if from me he have wholesome beverage, account me not your servant. This is all. Do it, and thou hast the one half of my heart. Do it not. Thou splits thine own. I'll do it, my lord. I will seem friendly, as thou hast advised me. Oh, miserable lady. But for me, what case stand I in? I must be the poisoner of good Polixenes, and my grand to do is the obedience to a master one who in rebellion with himself will have all that are his, so too. To do this deed, promotion follows. If I could find example of thousands that had struck anointed kings and flourished after, I'd not do it. But since nor brass, nor stone, nor parchment bears not one, let villainy itself forswear it. I must forsake the court. To do it or no is certain to me a breakneck. Back is now very far. Here comes Bohemia. This is strange. Methinks my favor here begins to warp, not speak. Good day, Camillo. Hail, most royal sir. What is the news in the court? None rare, my lord. The king hath on him such a countenance as he had lost some province, and a region loved as he loves himself. Even now I met him with customary compliment, when he, wafting his eyes to the contrary and falling a lip of much contempt, speeds from me and so leaves me to consider what is breeding that changes thus his manners. I dare not know, my lord. How? Oh, dare not? Do not? Do you know and dare not? Be intelligent to me. Tis thereabouts. For to yourself, what you do know, you must and cannot say you dare not. Good Camillo, your changed complexions are to me a mirror, which shows me mine changed too. For I must be a party in this alteration, finding myself thus altered with. There is a sickness which puts some of us in distemper. But I cannot name the disease, and it is caught of you that yet are well. How? Caught of me? Make me not sighted like the basilisk. I have looked on thousands who have sped the better by my regard, but killed none so. The 
Mr. Miller, as you are certainly a gentleman, there too clerk-like experienced, which no less adorns our gentry than our parents' noble names, in whose success we are gentle. I beseech you, if you know aught which does behold my knowledge, there ought to be informed, imprisoned not in ignorant concealment. I may not answer. Sickness caught of me, and yet I will. I must be answered. Dost thou hear, Camillo? I conjure thee by all the parts of man which honor does acknowledge, whereof the least is not this suit of mine, that thou declare what incidency thou dost guess of harm is creeping toward me. How far off, how near, which way to be prevented, if to be, if not, how best to bear it. Sir, I will tell you. Since I am charged in honor and by him that I think honorable, Therefore, mark my counsel, which must be even as swiftly followed as I mean to utter it. All, both yourself and me, cry lost, and so good night. On, good Camillo. I am appointed him to murder you. By whom, Camillo? By the king. For what? He thinks, nay, with all confidence he swears as he had seen it, or been an instrument of vice you to it, that you have touched his queen. Forbiddenly. Oh, well. My best blood turn to an infected jelly, and my name be yoked with his that did betray the best. Turn then my freshest reputation to a savour that may strike the dullest nostril where I arrive, and my approach be shunned, nay, hated too, worse than the greatest infection that e'er was heard or read. Swear this thought over by each particular star in heaven and by all their influences. You may as well forbid the sea for to obey the moon, as or by oath remove or counsel shake the fabric of his folly, whose foundation is piled upon his faith and will continue the standing of his body. How should this grow? I know not. But I am sure it is safer to avoid what's grown than question how it is born. If therefore you dare trust my honesty that lies enclosed in this trunk, which you shall bear along in pawned, away tonight. Your followers, I will whisper to the business, and will by twos and threes at several posterns clear them of the city. For myself, I'll put my fortunes to your service, which are here by this discovery lost. Be not uncertain, for by the honor of my parents I have uttered truth, which if you seek to prove, I dare not stand by, nor shall you be safer than one condemned by the king's own mouth thereon his execution sworn. I do believe thee. I saw his heart in his face. Give me thy hand. Be pilot to me, and thy places shall still neighbor mine. My ships are ready and my people did expect my hence departure two days ago. This jealousy is for a precious creature. As she's rare, must it be great? And as his person's mighty, must it be violent? And as he does conceive he is dishonored by a man which ever professed to him, why his revenges must in that be made more bitter. Fear or shades me. Good expedition to be my friend and comfort the gracious queen. Part of his theme, but nothing of his ill-tame suspicion. Come, Camillo, I will respect thee as a father if thou best my life off hence. Let us avoid. It is in mine authority to command the keys of all apostles. Please, your highness, to take the urgent hour. Come, sir, away. boy to you. He so troubles me, tis past enduring. Come, my gracious lord, shall I be your playfellow? No, I'll none of you. Why, my sweet lord? You'll kiss me hard and speak to me as if I were a baby still. I love you better. And why so, my lord? Oh, not for because your brows are blacker. Yet black brows, they say, become some women best, so that there be not too much hair there, but in a semicircle, or a half moon made with a pen. Who taught this? I learned it out of women's faces. Pray now, what colour are your eyebrows? Blue, my lord. Oh, nay, that's a mock. I have seen a lady's nose that has been blue, but not her eyebrows. Hark ye, the queen your mother rounds apace. 
We shall present our services to a fine new prince one of these days, and then you'd want him with us if we would have you. She is spread of late into a goodly bulk. Good time encounter her. What wisdom stirs amongst you? Come, sir, now I am for you again. Pray you sit by us and tell us a tale. Merry or sad shalt be? As merry as you will. A sad tale's best for winter. I have one of sprites and goblins. Let's have that, good sir. Come on, sit down. Come on, and do your best to fright me with your sprites. You're powerful at it. There was a man. Nay, come sit down, then on. Dwelt by a churchyard. I will tell it softly. Yon crickets shall not hear it. Come on, then, and give it me in mine ear. Was he met there? His train? Camillo with him. Behind the tuft of pines I met them. Never saw I men scour so on their way. I eyed them even to their ships. How blessed am I in my just censure, in my true opinion, a lack for lesser knowledge. How accursed in being so blessed. There may be in the cup a spider steeped, and one may drink, depart, and yet partake no venom, for his knowledge is not infected. But if one present the abhorred ingredient to his eye, make known how he hath drunk, he cracks his gorge, his sides with violent hefts. I have drunk and seen the spider. Camillo was his help in this, his pander. There is a plot against my life, my crown, all's true that is mistrusted. That false villain whom I employed was pre-employed by him. He has discovered my design, and I remain a pinched thing, yea, a very trick for them to play at will. How came the postern so easily open? By his great authority, which often hath no less prevailed than so on your command. I know it too well. Give me the boy. I am glad you did not nurse him. Though he does bear some signs of me, yet you have too much blood in him. What is this sport? Tear the boy hence. He shall not come about her. Away with him! And let her sport herself with that she's big with. For tis Polixenes hath made thee swell thus. But I'd say he had not, and I'll be sworn you would believe my saying, howe'er you lean to the nayward. You, my lords, look on her, mark her well. Be but about to say she is a goodly lady, and the justice of your hearts will thereto add. Tis pity she's not honest, honourable. Praise her, but for this her without door form, which on my faith deserves high speech, and straight the shrug, the hum or ha, these petty brands that calumny doth use. Oh, I am out. That mercy does, for calumny will sear virtue itself. These shags, these hums and haws, when you have said she's goodly, come between, ere you can say she's honest. But be it known, from him that has most cause to grieve it should be, she's an adulteress. You don't villain say so, the most replenished villain in the world. You are as much more villain. You, my lord, do but mistake. You have mistook my lady Polixenes for Leontes. Oh, thou thing, which I'll not call a creature of thy place, lest barbarism, making me the precedent, should a like language use to all degrees, and mannerly distinguishment leave out betwixt the prince and beggar. I have said she's an adulteress. I have said with whom? More, she's a traitor, and Camillo is a federally with her, and one that knows what she should shame to know herself, but with her most vile principle, that she's a bed swerver, even as bad as those that vulgars give bold titles, I am privy to this their late escape. No, by my life, privy to none of this. How will this grieve? When you have come to clearer knowledge that you thus have published me. Gentle, my lord, you scarce can write me truly then to say you did mistake. No, if I mistake, in those foundations which I build upon, the centre is not big enough to bear a schoolboy's top. Away with her to prison! He who shall speak for her is afar off guilty but that he speaks. There's some ill planet reigns. I must be patient. Till the heavens look with an aspect more favorable. Good, my lords, 
I am not prone to weeping, as our sex commonly are. The want of which vain doom perchance shall dry your pities. But I have that honourable grief lodged here, which burns worse than tears dry. Beseech you all, my lords, with thoughts so qualified as your charities shall best instruct you, measure me, and so the king's will be performed. Shall I be heard? Who is that goes with me? Beseech your highness my women may be with me, for you see my plight requires it. Do not weep, good fools, there is no cause. When you shall know your mistress has deserved prison, then abound in tears as I come out. This action I now go on is for my better grace. Adieu, my lord. I never wish to see you sorry. No, I trust I shall. My women come. You have leave. Go. Do our bidding. Hence. Beseech your highness. Call the queen again. Be certain what you do, sir, lest your justice prove violence, in the which three great ones suffer, yourself, your queen, your son. For her, my lord, I dare my life lay down, and will do it, sir. Please you to accept it, that the queen is spotless in the eyes of heaven and to you. I mean in this which you accuse her. If it proves she's otherwise, I'll keep my stable where I lodge my wife. I'll go in couples with her. Then, when I feel and see her, no further trust her. For every inch of woman in the world and every dram of woman's flesh is false, if she be. Hold your pieces. Good, my lord. It is for you we speak, not for ourselves. You are abused, and by some put her on that will be damned for it. Would I knew the villain. I would lamb damn him. Be she on her lord. I have three daughters. The eldest is eleven, the second and the third nine, and some five. If this prove true, they'll pay for it. By mine honour, I'll dill them all. Fourteen they shall not see to bring false generations. They are co heirs, and I had rather glib myself than they should not produce fair issue. Cease no more. You smell this business with a sense as cold as a dead man's nose. But I do see it and feel it as you feel, doing thus, and see with all the instruments that feel. If it be so, we need no grave to bury honesty. There's not a grain of it, the face to sweeten of the whole dungy earth. What? Lack I credit? I had rather you did lack than I, my lord, upon this ground. And more it would content me to have her honour true than your suspicion. Be blamed for it how you might. Why, what need we commune with you of this, but rather follow our forceful instigation? Our prerogative calls not your counsels, but our natural goodness imparts this, which if you, or stupefied, or seeming so in skill, cannot or will not relish a truth like us, inform yourselves we need no more of your advice. The matter, the loss, the gain, the ordering on't is all properly ours. And I wish, my liege, you had only in your silent judgment tried it without more overture. How could that be? Either thou art most ignorant by age, or thou wert born a fool. Camillo's flight, added to their familiarity, which was as gross as ever touched conjecture, that lacked sight only, naught for approbation, but only seeing all other circumstances made up to the deed, doth push on this proceeding. Yet, for a greater confirmation, for in an act of this importance, twere most piteous to be wild, I have dispatched in post to sacred Delphos, to Apollo's temple, Cleomenes and Dion, whom you know of stuffed sufficiency. Now, from the oracle, they will bring all whose spiritual counsel had shall stop or spur me. Have I done well? Well done, my lord, though I am satisfied and need no more than what I know. Yet shall the oracle give rest to the minds of others, such as he whose ignorant credulity will not come up to the truth. So have we thought it good from our free person she should be confined, lest that the treachery of the two fled hence be left her to perform. Come, follow us. We are to speak in public, for this business will raise us all. To laughter, as I take it, if the good truth were known. 
Europe is too good for thee. What dost thou then in prison? Now, good sir, you know me, do you not? For a worthy lady and one whom much I honour. I pray you then conduct me to the Queen. I may not, madam. To the contrary, I have express commandment. Here's a do. To lock up honesty and honour from the access of gentle visitors. Is lawful, pray you, to see her women? Any of them? Emilia. Mm. So please you, madam, to put apart these your attendants, I shall bring Emilia forth. I pray now call her. Withdraw yourselves. And madam, I must be present at your conference. Well, be it so, prithee. Here's such a do to make no stain. A stain as passes colouring. Good gentlewoman, how fares our gracious lady? As well as one so great and so forlorn may hold together. On her frights and griefs, which never tender lady hath borne greater, she is something before her time delivered. A boy? A daughter, a goodly babe, lusty and like to live. The queen receives much comfort in it, says, My poor prisoner, I am innocent as you. I dare be sworn. These dangerous, unsafe views of the king beshrew them. He must be told on and he shall. The office becomes a woman best. I'll take it upon me. If I prove honey mouth, let my tongue blister, and never to my red-looked anger be the trumpet any more. Pray you, Emilia, commend my best obedience to the queen. If she dares trust me with her little babe, I'll show it the king, and undertake to be her advocate to the loudest. We do not know how he may soften at the sight of the child. The silence often of pure innocence persuades when speaking fails. Most worthy, madam, your honour and your goodness is so evident that your free understanding cannot miss a thriving issue. There's no lady living so meet for this great errand. Please, your ladyship, to visit the next room. I'll presently acquaint the queen of your most noble offer who but today hammered of this design, but durst not tempt a minister of honour, lest she should be denied. Tell her, Emilia, I use that tongue I have. If wit flow from it, as boldness from my bosom, let it not be doubted, I shall do good. Now be you blessed for it. I'll to the Queen. Please you, come something nearer. Madam, if it please the Queen to send the babe, I know not what I shall incur to pass it, having no warrant. You need not fear it, sir. The child was prisoner to the womb, and is by law and process of great nature thence freed and enfranchised. Not a party to the anger of the king, nor guilty of, if any be, the trespass of the queen. I do believe it. Do not you fear. Upon mine honour, I will stand twixt you and danger. to bear the matter thus. Mere weakness. If the cause were not in being, part of the cause, she the adulteress, for the harlot king is quite beyond mine arm, out of the blank and level of my brain, plot proof, but she I can hook to me, say that she were gone, given to the fire. The moiety of my rest might come to me again. Who's there? My lord. How does the boy? He took good rest tonight. Tis hoped his sickness is discharged. To see his nobleness. Conceiving the dishonor of his mother, he straight declined, drooped, took it deeply, 
fastened and fixed the shame on in himself, threw off his spirit, his appetite, his sleep, and downright languished. Leave me solely, go see how he fares. I find no thought of him. The very thought of my revenge is that way recoil upon me. In himself too mighty, and in his parties, his alliance. Let him be until a time may serve. For present vengeance, take it on her. Camillo and Polixenes laugh at me. Make their pastime at my sorrow. They should not laugh if I could reach them, nor shall she within my power. No, no, I said that I will see the You king. must not enter! Say, rather, good my lords, be second to me. Fear you his tyrannous passion, more or less than the queen's life? A gracious, innocent soul, more free than he is jealous? That's enough, madam. He hath not slept tonight, commanded none should come at him. Not so hot, good sir. I come to bring him sleep. Tis such as you that creep like shadows by him, and do sigh at each his needless heavings, such as you nourish the cause of his awaking. I, to come with words as medicinal as true, honest as either, to purge him of that humour that presses him from sleep. What noise there, ho? Oh? No noise, my lord, but needful conference about some gossips for your highness. How? Away with that audacious lady. Antigonus! I charge thee that she should not come about me. I knew she would. I told her so, my lord. Are your displeasures parallel on mine? She should not visit you. What canst not rule her? From all dishonesty he can. In this, unless he take the course that you have done, commit me for committing honor. Trust it, he shall not rule me. Allow you now, you hear. When she will take the rein, I let her run. But she'll not stumble. Good, my liege, I come. And I beseech you, hear me, who profess myself your loyal servant, your physician, your most obedient counsellor. Yet that dare less appear so in comforting your evils than such as most seem yours. I say I come from your good queen. Good queen? Good queen, my lord, good queen. I say good queen, and would by combat make her good, so were I a man the worst about you. Force her hence. Let him that makes but trifles of his eyes first hand me. On mine own accord I'll off. But first, I'll do my errand. The good queen, for she is good, hath brought you forth a daughter. Here it is. Commends it to your blessing. Out, a mankind witch! Hence with her out a door! A most intelligencing bore! Not so! I am as ignorant in that as you in so entitling me! And no less honest than you are mad! Which is as much I'll warrant as this world goes to pass for honest! Traitors, will you not push her out? Give her the bastard! Thou doted, thou art woman tired, unroosted by thy dame partlet here! Take up the bastard! Take up, I say, give thy crow. Forever unvenerable be those hands if thou takest up the princess by that forced baseness which he hath put upon. He dreads his wife. So I would you did. Then to a past all doubt you'd call your children yours. A nest of traitors. I am none by this good right. Nor I, nor any but one that's here, and that's himself. For he, the sacred honour of himself, his queens, his hopeful sons, his babes, betrays to slander, whose sting is sharper than the swords, and will not, for as the case now stands, it is a curse he cannot be compelled to, once remove the root of his opinion, which is rotten, as ever Ocos tone was sound. A callot of boundless tongue, who late hath beat her husband, and now baits me. This brat is none of mine. It is the issue of Polixenes. Hence with it! And together with the dam, commit them to the fire. It is yours. And might we lay the old proverb to your charge. So like you, tis the worse. Behold, my lords, although the print be little, the whole matter and copy of the father, eye, nose, lip, the trick of frown, his forehead, 
nay, the valley, the pretty dimples of his chin and cheek, his smiles, the very mould and frame of hand, nail, finger, and thou, good goddess nature, which hast made it so like to him that got it, if thou hast the ordering of the mind too, mongst all colours, no yellow int, lest she suspect as he does, her children, not her husband's. A gross hag, and Losel, thou art worthy to be hanged, and will not stay her tongue. Hang all the husbands that cannot do that feat. You will leave yourself hardly one subject. Once more, kick her hence. A most unworthy and unnatural lord can do no more. I'll have thee burned. I care not. It is an heretic that makes the fire, not she which burns in it. I'll not call you tyrant, but this most cruel usage of your queen. Not able to produce more accusation than your weak-hinged fancy. Something savours of tyranny. And will ignoble make you, yea, scandalous to the world? On your allegiance, out of the chamber with her, where I, a tyrant, where were her life? She durst not call me so if she did know me one. Away with her! I pray you, do not push me. I'll be gone. Look to your babe, my lord. Tis yours. Jove, send her a better guiding spirit. What needs these hands? You that are thus so tender on his follies will never do him good. Not one of you. So, so, farewell. We are gone. Ah, oh, traitor has said on thy wife to this. My child, away with it. Even thou that hast a heart so tender o'er it, take it hence and see it instantly consumed with fire. Even thou, and none but thou, take it up straight. Within this hour, bring me word tis done, and by good testimony, or I'll seize thy life with what thou else callst thine. If thou refuse and will encounter with my wrath, say so. The best of brains, with these my proper hands shall I dash out. Oh, take it to the fire. For thou setst on thy wife. I did not, sir. These lords, my noble fellows, if they please, can clear me on. We can. My royal liege, he is not guilty of her coming hither. You liars all! Beseech your highness. Give us better credit. We have always truly served you, and beseech you so to esteem of us. And on our knees we beg as recompense of our dear services, past and to come that you do change this purpose, which, being so horrible, so bloody, must lead on to some foul issue. We all kneel. I am a feather for each wind that blows. Shall I live on to see this bastard kneel and call me father? Better burn it now than curse it then. But be it, let it live. It shall not neither. You, sir, come you hither. You that have been so tenderly officious with Lady Marjorie, your middy for there to save this bastard's life, for tis a bastard as sure as this beard's grey. What will you adventure to save this brat's life? Anything, my lord, that my ability may undergo and nobleness impose. At least thus much. I'll pawn the little blood which I have left to save the innocent. Anything possible. It shall be possible. Swear by this sword thou wilt perform my bidding. I will, my lord. Mark and perform it, seest thou. For the fail of any point in shalt not only be death to thyself, but to thy lewd-tongued wife, whom for this time we pardon. We enjoin thee, as thou art liegeman to us, that thou carry this female bastard hence, and that thou bear it to some remote and desert place quite out of our dominions and that there thou leave it without more mercy to its own protection and favour of the climate. As by strange fortune it came to us, I do in justice charge thee on thy soul's peril and thy body's torture, that thou commend it strangely to some place where chance may nurse or end it. Take it up. I swear to do this. Though a present death had been more merciful. Come on, poor babe. Some powerful spirit instruct the kites and ravens to be thy nurses. 
wolves and bears, they say, casting their savageness aside, have done like offices of pity. Sir, be prosperous in more than this deed doth require, and blessing against this cruelty, fight on thy side. Poor thing, condemned to loss. No, I'll not rear another's issue. Please, Your Highness, posts from those you sent to the Oracle are come an hour since. Cleomenes and Dion, being well arrived from Delphos, are both landed, hasting to the court. So please you, sir, their speed hath been beyond account. Twenty-three days they have been absent, tis good speed. Foretells the great Apollo suddenly will have the truth of this appear. Prepare you, lords, summon a session, that we may arraign our most disloyal lady. For as she hath been publicly accused, so shall she have a just and open trial. While she lives, my heart will be a burden to me. Leave me and think upon my bidding. The climate's delicate, the air most sweet, fertile the isle. The temple, much surpassing the common praise it bears. I shall report, for most it caught me, the celestial habits, methinks I so should term them, and the reverence of the grave wearers. Oh, the sacrifice! How ceremonious, solemn, and unearthly it was in the offering. But of all the burst and the ear-deafening voice of the oracle, kin to Job's thunder, so surprised my sense that I was nothing. If the event of the journey prove as successful to the queen, oh, be it so, as it hath been to us rare, pleasant, speedy, the time is worth the use on it. Great Apollo, turn all to the best. These proclamations, so forcing faults upon Hermione, I little like. The violent carriage of it will clear or end the business. When the oracle, thus by Apollo's great divine sealed up, shall the contents discover, something rare even then will rush to knowledge. Go, fresh horses, and gracious be the issue. This session, to our great grief, we pronounce, even pushes against our hearts. The party tried, the daughter of a king, our wife, and one of us too much beloved. Let us be clear of being tyrannous, since we so openly proceed in justice, which shall have due course even to the guilt or the purgation. Produce the prisoner. It is His Highness's pleasure that the Queen appear in person here in court. Silence! Read the indictment. Hermione, Queen to the worthy Leontes, King of Sicilia, thou art here accused and arraigned of high treason in committing adultery with Polixenes, King of Bohemia, and conspiring with Camillo to take away the life of our sovereign lord, the king, thy royal husband. The pretense whereof being by circumstances partly laid open, thou, Hermione, contrary to the faith and allegiance of a true subject, did counsel and aid them for their better safety to fly away by night. Since what I am to say must be but that which contradicts my accusation, and the testimony on my part, no other but what comes from myself. It shall scarce boot me to say, not guilty. Mine integrity being counted falsehood, shall, as I express it, be so received. But thus, if powers divine behold our human actions as they do, I doubt not then, but innocence shall make false accusation blush, and tyranny tremble at patience. You, my lord, best know, who least will seem to do so. My past life hath been as continent, as chaste, as true, 
as I am now unhappy, which is more than history can pattern, though devised and played to take spectators. For behold me, a fellow of the royal bed, which owe a moiety of the throne, a great king's daughter, the mother to a hopeful prince, here standing to prate and talk for life and honour for who please to come and hear. For life, I prize it as I weigh grief, which I would spare. For honour, tis a derivative from me to mine, and only that I stand for. I appeal to your own conscience, sir. Before Polixenes came to your court, how I was in your grace, how merited to be so. Since he came, with what encounter so uncurrent I have strained to appear thus? If one jot beyond the bound of honour, or in act or will that way inclining, hardened be the hearts of all that hear me, and my nearest of kin cry, fie upon my grave. I ne'er heard yet that any of these bolder vices wanted less impudence to gainsay what they did than to perform it first. That's true enough, though tis a saying, sir, not due to me. You will not own it. More than mistress of which comes to me in name of fault, I must not at all acknowledge. For Polixenes, with whom I am accused, I do confess I loved him as in honour he required, with such a kind of love as might become a lady like me with a love even such, so and no other as yourself commanded, which not to have done, I think, had been in me both disobedience and ingratitude to you and toward your friend, whose love had spoke ever since it could speak from an infant freely, that it was yours. Now for conspiracy. I know not how it tastes, though it be dished for me to try how. All I know of it is that Camillo was an honest man, and why he left your court the gods themselves, wotting no more than I, are ignorant. You knew of his departure, as you know what you have undertaken to do in his absence. Sir, you speak a language that I understand not. My life stands in the level of your dreams, which I lay down. Your actions are my dreams. You had a bastard by Polixenes, and I but dreamed it as you were past all shame. Those of your fact are so, so past all truth, which to deny concerns more than avails. For as the brat hath been cast out, like to itself, no father owning it, which is indeed more criminal in thee than it, so thou shalt feel our justice, in whose easiest passage look for no less than death. Sir, spare your threat. The bug which you would fright me with, I seek. To me can life be no commodity. The crown and comfort of my life, your favour, I do give lost, for I do feel it gone, but know not how it went. My second joy, and first fruits of my body. From his presence I am barred, like one infectious. My third comfort, starred most unluckily, is from my breast, the innocent milk in its most innocent mouth, hailed out to murder, myself on every post proclaimed as trumpet, with immodest hatred the childbed privilege denied, which longs to women of all fashion. Lastly, hurried here to this place in the open air before I have got strength of limit. Now, my liege, tell me what blessings I have here alive, that I should fear to die. Therefore proceed. But yet hear this, mistake me not, no life, I prize it not a straw, but for mine honour which I would free. If I should be condemned upon surmises, all proof sleeping else but what your jealousies awake, I tell you it is rigour, not law. Your honour's all, I do refer me to the oracle. Apollo be my judge. This your request is altogether just. Therefore bring forth, and in Apollo's name, his oracle. The emperor of Russia was my father. Oh, that he were alive and here beholding his daughter's trial. That he did but see the flatness of my misery. 
yet with eyes of pity, not revenge. You here shall swear upon this sword of justice that you, Cleomenes and Dion, have been both at Delphos and from thence have brought this sealed up oracle by the hand delivered of great Apollo's priest. And that since then you have not dared to break the holy seal nor read the secrets in it. All this we swear. Break up the seals and read. Hermione is chaste. Polixenes blameless, Camillo a true subject, Leontes a jealous tyrant, his innocent babe truly begotten, and the king shall live without an heir if that which is lost be not found. And now, now blessed, blessed be the great, great Apollo. Apollo. Praise! Hast thou read truth? Aye, my lord, even so as it is here set down. There is no truth at all in the oracle. The session shall proceed. This is mere falsehood. My lord, the king, the king. What is the business? Oh, sir, I shall be hated to report it. The prince, your son, with mere conceit and fear of the queen's speed, is gone. How? Ah. Gone? He's dead. Apollo's angry. And the heavens themselves do strike at my injustice. How oh, now there? This news is mortal to the queen. Look down and see what death is doing. Take her hands. Her heart is but a charge. She will recover. I have too much believed mine own suspicion. Beseech you tenderly apply to her some remedies for life. Apollo! Pardon my great profaneness against thine oracle. I'll reconcile me to Polixenes, new woo my queen. Recall the good Camillo, whom I proclaim a man of truth, of mercy. For being transported by my jealousies to bloody thoughts and to revenge, I chose Camillo for the minister to poison my friend Polixenes, which had been done but that the good mind of Camillo tardied my swift command. Though I, with death and with reward, did threaten and encourage him not doing it and being done, he most humane and filled with honor, to my kingly guest unclasped my practice, quit his fortunes here which you knew great, and to the hazard of all uncertainties himself commended, no richer than his honor. How he glisters through my rust, and how his piety does my deeds make the blacker? Woe the while! Oh, cut my lace! That's my heart cracking it break too. What fit is this, good lady? What studied torments tyrant hast for me? What wheels, racks, fires? What flaying, boiling in leads or oils? What old or newer tortures must I receive? whose every word deserves to taste of thy most worst. Thy tyranny, together working with thy jealousies, fancies too weak for boys, too green and idle for girls of nine. Oh, think of them and them run mad indeed, stark mad, for all thy bygone fooleries were but spices of it. That thou betrayed Polixenes was nothing, that did but show thee of a fool inconstant and damnable and grateful. Nor was much thou wouldst have poisoned good Camillo's honor to have him kill a king. Poor trespasses, more monsters standing by. Whereof I reckon the casting forth to crows thy baby daughter to be none or little. Though a devil would have shed water out of fire, thou dunt. Nor is directly laid to thee the death of the young prince whose honorable thoughts, thoughts high for one so tender, cleft the heart that could conceive a gross and foolish sire blemished his gracious dam. This is not, no, laid to thy answer, but the last, O oh, lords, when I have said, cry woe, the queen, 
the queen, the sweetest, dearest creatures, dead. And vengeance fought, not dropped down yet. The higher powers forbid. I say she's dead, I'll swear it. If word or oath prevail, not go and see. If you can bring tincture or luster to her lip, her eye, heat outwardly or breath within, I'll serve you as I would do the gods. But oh, thou tyrant, do not repent these things. For they are heavier than all thy woes can stir. Therefore betake thee to nothing but despair. A thousand knees, ten thousand years together, naked, fasting upon a barren mountain, and still winter in storm perpetual, could not move the gods to look that way thou well. Go on. Go on, thou canst not speak too much. I have deserved all tongues to talk their bitterest. To say no more. <laughs> However the business goes, you have made fault of the boldness of your speech. <laughs> I am sorry for it. All faults I make, when I shall come to know them, I do repent. <laughs> Alas. <laughs> I have showed too much the rashness of a woman. He is touched to the noble heart. <laughs> what's gone and what's past help should be past grief. Uh -huh. Do not receive affliction at my petition. I beseech you rather let me be punished that have minded you of what you should forget. <laughs> now, good my liege, <laughs> sir, Royal sir, <laughs> forgive a foolish woman. The love I bore your queen, uh, no fool again. I'll speak of her no more, nor of your children. I'll not remember you of my own lord, who is lost too. Take your patience to you, and I'll say nothing. Thou didst speak but well, when most the truth which I receive much better than to be pitied of thee. Prithee, bring me to the dead bodies of my queen and son. One grave shall be for both. Upon them shall the causes of their death appear unto our shame perpetual. Once a day I'll visit the chapel where they lie, and tears shed there shall be my recreation. So long as nature will bear up with this exercise, so long I daily vow to use it. Come and lead me to these sorrows. 